she stabs. will now have this unsatiable, insatiable thirst for him that will never be satisfied until it kills him, basically. (sighs) So, she heads off into, well, into the north, but, you know, into the sunset, whatever, and... In her wake, she sends some Draugar. What are Draugar? Draugar are basically zombies. They're, you know, reanimated corpses. Well, Atticus starts trying to hack them to bits with his other magical sword that he got back in Hounded that I forgot to mention called Muralta. And isn't really having a lot of success with killing them when out of nowhere... Frank Chischilli, the Hatali, I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but the, the Frank Chischilli does some Navajo juju and beats them all down and kills them. Okay, so what he ended up doing was calling uh, on one of the first people, one of their deities, who sent her son Monster Slayer down to possess Frank's body to kill all the Draugar. And that pisses Coyote off because Coyote was like, whoa, 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 wait, I was I was wanting you to use that little trick because it was a one-time thing. I was wanting you to use that on the Skinwalkers. But now the Skinwalkers have been stabbed with famine and so they want to kill Atticus and Coyote goes, well, that works into my plans just perfectly. You were going to do it anyways because I know how you are, you noble, fighty, testosterone-fueled Irishman. Um, But now you have extra incentive because they're going to want to kill you. So that's the setup for that storyline. And the hell thing... Just note it, okay? <laughs> Just note it. Hell has now tried to recruit Atticus to start Rad- Ragnarok, which means that she's planning Ragnarok, and Atticus has rebuffed her and said no, and so problems abound because now she's going to pull some shit probably and want revenge for his denial of her greatest desire. Anyways, so... After this incident with Hell, they, they start the Blessing Way ceremony. The Skinwalkers start attacking the Hogan, which is not fully protected, but kind of protected. Atticus does his best to understand what the Skinwalkers are and how they work and how they fight and protect all the people in the Hogan. And um, nobody dies. No, 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 wait. I take that back. One of the workmen dies. Um, which is kind of scary and sad and everybody mourns it. And, um, so the, uh, so then a couple of things happen fairly quickly. This is part of why this is one of my favorite books is because it's just, you know, one thing after another and it's a lot of hilarity and a lot of excitement and a lot of action. And I'm probably not telling it quite right. Um, Atticus fakes Granuel's abduction. Not quite death, but abduction. And they run off and take fully take on their new assumed identities of Riley and Caitlin Connor, brother and sister, because they're both redheads, so they look like their brother and sister. Um, Atticus has a conversation with the elemental of that area, Colorado, who doesn't want to move the gold to where Atticus tells him to because there's already a coal mine in that area and the elementals don't like mines but the but Atticus explains as best he can to an elemental again you really need to read the book to understand the ins and outs of how this works 
Um, but Atticus explains to the elemental about why they need the gold and how renewable energy works and how having that renewable energy source will actually be better for that area than mining coal. So the elemental says, all right, essentially, all right, you do what you, you shut down that coal mine and I'll move the gold. So Atticus goes out to shut down the coal mine, shenanigans ensue, but on his way back from doing that, he gets attacked by Hell's Hound, Garm. Who is a hellhound, <laughs> literally and figuratively. And followed, no, first he gets, he gets attacked first by the Skinwalkers. And then very shortly thereafter gets attacked by Garm. Now, Coyote comes across Atticus, hugely injured with, like, half his neck missing because of the skinwalkers, and starts laughing at him, because that's what Coyote does. And like I said, he's an asshole, but there's something just so lovable about him. Anyways, um, and so, so Coyote's sitting there laughing at him, and Garm comes along, and so Coyote's like, oh, fuck, I can't get what I need done if my druid is dead so he starts trying to save Atticus and eventually what he ends up doing is taking on Atticus's form again and allowing Garm to eat him so the dog will be like yay I did what I'm supposed to do and go back to hell and it'll be fine so that's great well after that adventure um Atticus inquires uh, with Hal Halk, who is now the alpha of the Tempe pack, by the way. Atticus inquires after um, Leif Helgerson. If you'll recall, Leif got his head smooshed by Thor in Hammered, and Atticus did his best to, to mend him. And so Atticus is wanting to, to know um, what, what's up with Leif. But he also, you know, he also has this sort of level of distrust because he knows Leaf A, runs his own agenda, and B, might not be the same person that he was before he came back to Asgard because of all that shit that happened and head smooshing and, and all that. So he tells Hal to tell Leaf to meet him in Flagstaff for a beer, essentially. And they, uh, so that they can catch up. Well, in this meeting, Leaf lets Atticus know that on their way to Asgard, remember they stopped overnight in the Czech Republic, I think it was, Leaf actually went to the vampire that created him a thousand years ago, Zanique, and told him, hey, I'm about to do this really crazy, stupid, vengeful thing. I might not come back. Can you watch over my territory in the meantime? Now, Leaf's territory has been the entire state of Arizona for centuries and so he has held off all comers for forever now suddenly there's more vampires and so the other magical people in that area are not too keen on this But in this conversation that Leaf has with Atticus in Flagstaff, in a bar called Granny's Closet, which I really hope is a real bar, because that is an awesome name for a bar, I'm just saying. Um, Leaf lets Atticus know that he really doesn't want all these other vampires. He wants to take his territory back, and he asks Atticus please, will you help me do this? And Atticus is like, I'm not getting involved in a vampire war. 
dude. I'm not doing it. Uh, because here's the thing about druids and vampires is uh, vampires don't register as living beings with the earth. So Atticus can use his druid juju magic to unbind everything that holds a vampire together. So they basically like turn into a bunch of goo and blood and guts and sinew and all that stuff. So druids are extremely dangerous to vampires. And this is partially why the druids got killed off back back way back in the day is because vampires went, oh no, these these magical users are totally dangerous and uh, we don't want them. So with the help of Minerva of the Roman uh, pantheon and the Romans themselves, the vampires had all the druids killed off except for Atticus who was running from Angus Og at the time and was able to get away to hang out with Genghis Khan and other crazy shit. Oh, so, anyways, back to this vampire war. Leaf knows that Atticus will not act unless he is directly involved. So Leaf has Zanik come and attack Atticus in his hotel room and actually nearly kills him, um, knowing full well that Atticus will do whatever it takes to defend him, himself, and keep himself alive, but in the meantime, start off Leaf's vampire war. So that effectively ends everything. Any possible little friendly friendship feeling Ooh, more bonus bacon for alliteration. That might have still existed between Atticus and Leaf. Atticus now 100% distrusts Leaf and all vampires and vows that he will unbind any vampire on sight um, from there on out. So after recovering from that episode, the, the story transitions back to the primary focus being on killing off the skinwalkers. And long story short, <laughs> so I'm trying not to have this show run 30, 40 minutes like it has the past couple of weeks. Uh, long story short, he wins. He's stupid in the process, doesn't listen to good advice along the way um but he does kill the skinwalkers oh 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 and one more thing before um i start wrapping up the last little bit of this story uh while he's unconscious after being attacked by zinik he has a dream with a capital d where he is visited by um ganesha with the knowledge that there are other all-knowing gods who are very aware that he's not actually dead. And they all basically say, you know what, don't do anything about hell. Don't do anything about hell or else. So there you are. Um, they basically say, we're gonna leave you alone. We're gonna let you train your apprentice, Granuel, in private and in peace. For the next 12 years, just don't do anything about hell. And Atticus goes, fine by me. Uh, you know, but there's this sort of understanding that he's going to have to do something about it later. Okay? Okay, so back to Skinwalkers. Skinwalkers get defeated. Um, and uh, ultimately, uh, Atticus finds out that Coyote has set it up so that he and Granuel can live on the reservation 
for the next 12 years so that granular